AIDS, tuberculosis, and the plague. Some of the worst diseases came from animals. The new coronavirus is just the latest. Scientists believe it originated in bats and that it spread either directly to humans or via pangolins. But how exactly? If the virus is actually in food, and we have no examples of where this virus has been transmitted as a foodborne, whereas someone has consumed a food product, um, the viruses can be killed, like viruses, other viruses as well, can be killed if, if the, the meat is cooked. Wildlife and the coronavirus. It's not about pointing fingers, but we need to know where the disease started, with us or with our friends in the animal kingdom. And how exactly do these diseases move between hosts? Scientists are trying to work that out, but have to be careful not to make matters worse while in the field. <laughs> Our closest relatives in the animal kingdom are keen communicators, just like us. The similarities are not surprising, given that we share almost 99% of our genome with chimpanzees. But what is a common cold for a human can be lethal for a chimpanzee. And as the animals are a highly social species, an infection can wipe out an entire group. So researchers are very cautious when approaching the apes here at the Tai National Park in Ivory Coast. Germany's Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology has been studying the behaviour of chimpanzees for many years. Its experts have seen all too many infections have a devastating consequence for the animals. They examined disease apes to determine their cause of death and identify any pathogens. Also because potential viruses could pose a threat to humans too. Take Ebola, for example. The last major outbreak occurred in West Africa between 2014 and 2016, taking the lives of 11,000 people. Ebola is believed to have spread to humans through the consumption of infected wild animals, such as apes and fruit bats. They typically carry a range of viruses, but are not necessarily affected by them. If an ape eats fruit contaminated with fruit bat saliva, it can become infected and the virus can then be passed on by a human eating infected ape meat. In the case of Ebola, the virus is deadly for both humans and apes. Scientists are investigating those modes of transmission among the chimpanzees of Ivory Coast and among lowland gorillas and bonobos in the rainforests of Central Africa and the Congo Basin. They too are under acute threat from humans who are encroaching deeper into the natural habitats of the primates cutting down trees to sell the timber worldwide. A further threat is from poachers who hunt the animals for their meat to feed the rapidly growing population and unwittingly come into contact with viruses and pathogens in the jungle. Scientists have registered around 200 zoonotic diseases, infections transferred from animals to humans. While not all are dangerous, there might well be more deadly surprises lurking in the jungle. Fabian Lehnderz joins us from the Robert Koch Institute. Just how dangerous are diseases that originate in animals for us? Well, in general, we have to say that most diseases, most infectious diseases originating in animal, uh, in humans are originating in animals. So the more we look, the more we find that even the well-known measles, such as measles, come actually from the animal kingdom. So they are there and they are dangerous. I, I was also reading something similar, that humans suffer from very similar pathogens to, to the great apes. Why, why is that? Well, we share lots of genetic and physiological properties with the great apes. They're our closest relative. Uh, strictly speaking, we are great apes taxonomically. So this is why we share lots of the same things. The only difference is that we humans are a big population, all connected, and the great apes are not. So they have less infectious diseases actually circulating amongst them. So how do scientists uh, prevent 
uh, chimpanzees, for example, apes, uh, which, whichever animal they may be that they're uh, researching, how do they prevent them from catching something from us? Uh, that's a very important topic. Um, actually, we carry more diseases than they do, probably, and we have shown that through research or tourism, we can bring our infectious diseases to the great apes. So we have, since 2008, uh, done a big campaign where uh, we promote hygiene measures, just keeping a distance, wearing a mask, basically everything we are doing now at the moment everywhere in the world to prevent, prevent disease spread. Who's carrying around more disease? Uh, are we or are the animals? Because I also uh, read about bats that they carry around thousands of viruses that never actually make them sick, but just one of them has spread throughout the human population like wildfire COVID-19. Well, if you talk about the animals in general, they are a very uh, taxonomic diverse group, so they will have more pathogens than we have in total. But looking at one single species, humans have the property to have um, the pathogen circulate permanently amongst us. And in many animal species, that's not possible under natural circumstances because they are not such a big population and they are not so connected. So, you know, they, they don't have the globalization problem like we have. Mm. So what can your research on, on great apes contribute to protecting humans from future pandemics? So from, from the anthropocentric point of view, um, the great apes, you know, they live in an area with high biodiversity, with lots of microorganisms which we don't even know about. And they serve as little filters. Whatever they catch from the environment, which makes them sick or kills them, is very, very likely also of importance for us. So we can use them as sentinels. And uh, is the future looking better through your research? Uh, is it so dire? Um, I mean, everyone talks about the next pandemic, uh, and we haven't even got through this one, have we? Well, but yeah, this is also not the first pandemic, right? We have many which have already affected mankind in, in the past, and HIV is also a clearly zoonotic disease coming from the chimpanzees, for example, right? So I'm very sure the next one will come. Nobody can say when it will be and where exactly it starts. But this is where we need more research to identify the risk points and the risk factors. Is it something that's being funded to the extent that you'd like to see? I think you will never get a positive reply on that from any researcher <laughs> in the world. So uh, obviously, I think it's, it's, it's good. It's one of the few positive side effects of this pandemic that there's more attention now on these issues. and. The concept of one health, where we look at the environment, at human health and animal health, and the connectivity both between those has become, again, a word which is even mentioned by politicians. So there is hope that there will be better support in the future. Good to hear. Fabian Lindetz, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. Have you got questions you'd like to ask about the coronavirus? Get in contact on our YouTube channel and our science correspondent Derek Williams will look into the subject. Why are diabetics highly vulnerable to getting seriously ill when they contract COVID-19? This is one of those questions researchers have been trying to answer for months, and, and they've really struggled with it. And it's a critical one, particularly for countries that have high rates of, of diabetes. A, a recent study from, from England, for example, showed that earlier in the pandemic, um, people who had the condition made up around a third of COVID-19 related deaths in hospitals. That's a lot. Um, estimates in the US have put that percentage even higher, but it's, it's really difficult to, to untangle um, the exact reasons why people living with diabetes are often affected more severely um, than the average COVID-19 patient. That's because patients who have type two diabetes, um, the most common kind, often also have other comorbidities associated with severe COVID-19 outcomes, um, complicating factors like, like obesity or, or, or hypertension, for example. Um, the exact cause of, of the often more severe outcomes in patients who have diabetes is therefore still unclear. But we know from past research um, that the metabolic disorder also affects immune response, which means it can impair your ability to recover from infections. And 
and COVID-19 can also attack um, some of the same organs, uh, like your kidneys, that may have already been impacted in someone uh, who has diabetes. Uh, that's why researchers are now looking at whether uh, anti-diabetic drugs could also maybe play a role in treating COVID-19, um, even among those who don't have the disorder. And now a brief look at the latest data on COVID-19 from over 200 countries and territories to give you an idea of where we're at in the global fight against the virus. New cases have doubled in 23 countries and increased in another 71. New case numbers have stayed at the same level in five nations. 78 countries have seen new positive cases for COVID go down. Newly reported case numbers have halved in 21 countries. And 11 have reported no new cases for four weeks in a row. Here's the bar graph stacked up against the statistics of the last weeks. Remember, the battle is won when that entire chart is blue. There's a long way to go.